is a breakthrough physicist. And I'll tell you, it's, it's uh, amazing how many times before I first met Nassim, which was uh, just it was a couple years ago in May on Big Island uh, at a, a, con a, a conference there called the Earth Transformation Conference uh, that Di Dr. Michael Salo was hosting. And uh, for years, I had heard about Nassim. Nassim, Nassim, Nassim. And you have to meet Nassim. And I thought, well, I wonder if I'm ever going to have that opportunity. And, and finally, I did. And it was at this conference. But it turns out, I was the one slated to speak after him. And, and when you hear what this man has to say, I'm going, <laughs> You know, so it, it was, uh, it, but it was, it was wonderful to have the chance to finally meet you, Nassim, there. Uh, Nassim Haramein has, in his career, uh, broken through boundaries of physics. He has challenged the, the current physics models on a number of points uh, that appear to be flawed, and he has been proving for the completion of, of the answers uh, to, to those missing links. And he has done pioneering work in the underlying geometry uh, that is uh, material reality. And it's fascinating to see how he has put this together. And I encourage you to pursue his work. And the sim, we invite you to, to speak to us for the next 15 minutes. Let, give him a real, real taste of what you're all about. Thank you, John. It was my honor to meet you on the Big Island that time. And thank you, uh, Gene, for inviting me. It's so great to be here. I'm so honored to be here with you all today. It's, uh, it's really, you know, I feel um, it's really an uh, important moment in the history of humanity, uh, this moment we're experiencing this month with everything that's going on. And I think this event is really a culmination of this new uh, beginning. This new beginning, as the old crumble, uh, the new emerge, and this is the new. This is the new, the new possibility for the planet, the new possibility for humanity, and um, and a new possibility for our children and grandchildren. And I want to mention as well that um, Jean and Joe, you know, are pioneer and they're giants. You know, I feel humbled to be here. Uh, they have done so much to bring awareness of this uh, change in mentality and this change in uh, conceptual notion of our world and our reality uh, into the public and reaching out to folks um, around the world just like you and I, you know, like people that have, you know, good logic and, you know, what I call um, um, common sense, which is not so common, you know, and and that just is so important. And, and in one way, you know, it takes a lot of courage to do that. So thank you, thank you so much for your work, um, because it as well opens the way for people like these inventors and I that have you know, worked in the dark corners in some laboratory setting or some desk somewhere writing formulas to like be able to bring it to the world and you know, typically we're not going to get the support of the established um, um, scientific community but if we get the support of the public at large because it makes sense because it has common sense then we are able to push and force the established uh, community to take a look at it, a real look, you know. And there's a big difference between skepticism and closed-mindedness. And that difference is not so well understood, right? A skepticism is approaching something with uh, intent to understand it and to evaluate it. Um, Closed-mindedness is refusing to look at it altogether, and you know that happens a lot. And I've been in those situations. I've had to sit and stand in front of some of the biggest physics, you know, buff in the world, and 
and tell them that they're fundamentally wrong about some things, you know? They've got a lot of good things going, but they're fundamentally wrong about some other things. And, uh, and one of those is that you can look at the world and think that things in the world defines the space. Or you can look at the world and, and say, the space defines the things. And so far, it has been the former attitude that has prevailed. The idea that things are standalone, that they can be isolated, you know, I mean, the cat in the box, you know. Um, uh, you know, just as an example, you know, the, the concept that you can put a cat in a box and you don't know what it's doing, could be alive, could be dead. Does it really matter? Does the universe know? Or is it what you know that's important? What's important is what the universe knows. The universe knows exactly what's happening with that cat. And what you know is really irrelevant. <laughs> and if you actually could tap into the universe a little bit, you probably could know without having to open the box. And so what I, in, you know, this is an analogy to quantum theory, uncertainty principles, and a subatomic particle. And what I'm saying here, you know, in a funny way, but what I'm saying is really fundamental. That is that in the concept that the structure of space, from that structure emerge all things and all things return to, starts to give us a foundation for a new concept of energy, a new concept of gravity, a new concept of electromagnetism, and the forces of nature that comes together that produces our material world. And from that view, the material world does not look so material anymore. It starts to vacillate. It's, it's tough all of a sudden to pinpoint which part exactly is that little billiard ball you're telling me about, right? That little atom you're thinking of. And when you start looking closer and closer, you find that that little atom not only exhibit immense energy dynamics, but as well is mostly space, it's mostly empty in our understanding of space. And so where is that energy potential come from? Well, in quantum theory, causation is not addressed. That is, they'll tell you, oh, well, it all started in the Big Bang. <laughs> the Big Bang has become the god of science. If you don't know where it come from, it came from the Big Bang. <laughs> and then if you ask, well, where did the Big Bang come from? That's voodoo. <laughs> now you gotta go to church. Don't ask me, just go to church. <laughs> right? Well, you know, my view is that Maybe we need to understand the source of that energy structure. And it became clear to me that the, that the natural world, I, I was very involved in climbing, I was very involved in skiing and mountaineering and so on. I observed the material world very closely and I could see that the material world was like a, was like a growth of the vacuum structure, that the, that the space-time manifold was emerging and producing very specific pattern structures in space that we called material world, but that it emerged from space itself. That space was extending itself and looking back at itself in this... Consciously in, dynamically coupled. And consciously dynamically <laughs> coupled, absolutely, as it carries information along a feedback loop of of information structure that define a very specific field geometry and I went about to find what is that field geometry and that <laughs> took me 20 years. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
And I thought, you know, and, and throughout this exploration, I realized that the application of that, that understanding could have huge impact on society. That is, if we could find that fundamental pattern of creation, if we